Hey everybody, Ash here with 10 Cents with another week in fragrance. Had a number of new releases pop up over this last week, some men's, some women's, and a few of these releases are really intriguing. We also got more information on Spice Bomb Night Vision, got an actual breakdown of the notes, and that one is officially confirmed. Some people thought that Spice Bomb Night Vision was maybe not actually real, that it was potentially a Photoshop or something like that, but it's been confirmed. We've got eight fragrances to go over, so let's go ahead and jump into another week in fragrance. So I just got done filming, I was about to start editing. I'm doing this the day that you're going to see it. Uh, I realized how terrible my hair looks the entire video, so that's cool, you gotta love it. I'm not gonna reshoot it though, I mean, no. You're gonna have to just deal with that terrible thing going on. Anyway, I was in the middle of editing, and I actually saw a post uh, from my man Ronnie. I'm not gonna use his last name because I don't know if he wants me to use it. He always has his ear to the ground when it comes to new releases. He's in Europe and you know they they always get things first. The Europeans. You guys are lucky. Anyway, he just noticed a new flanker to Alien Man by Terry Mugler posted online. Again, only in Europe. And this hasn't even been announced yet in Fragrantica or Base Notes or anywhere else at this point. Anyway, it's called Alien Man Fusion. This is the only picture we have so far. Again, thanks Ronnie. And these are the notes that we have right now. Ginger, cinnamon, osmanthus, leather, smoky beechwood, and green coffee. So I wanted to let you guys know, it looks like there is a new Alien Man flanker that we're gonna be seeing pretty soon. So look for official announcements from Mugler soon on that. And as soon as I get some official pictures of the bottle and official information and everything, I will pass that on. Do not have any idea as far as release dates go, official release dates. But there we have it, a new Mugler flanker for men. Alien Man is one that was not really very well received, but I do notice there's no dill note in Alien Man Fusion, which is one of the things that got hated on with the original Alien Man. So this is something to look forward to possibly. Alien Man Fusion. And now back to uh, what I just filmed with my hair looking like crap. First off, we'll talk about Spice Bomb Night Vision. This one officially releases in February of 2019. Though I think it's actually available in some places in Europe right now. First off, a note from the brand. Spice Bomb Night Vision is announced as an explosive contrast of green freshness and dark spices, described as a very sensual fragrance, powerful and alluring. It is designed for the nighttime. Darkness and mystery are new themes that are introduced to the line with this flanker. It intensifies Spice Bomb's original message of the man's innate power of seduction and addiction by placing the focus on undertones of darkness and mystery. Yeah, so whatever that means. So it's supposed to be alluring, give off a dark and mysterious feel, and they're positioning it for nighttime use. Let's go over the notes here. Has top notes of green cardamom, green mandarin, grapefruit, and Granny Smith apple. So obviously along with the bottle, you know, the green undertones on the bottle, and they specifically mention green cardamom, green mandarin, and then Granny Smith apple, which is green as the top notes. And then once you hit the heart or the mid, you get the uh, the black feel, which I guess is the rest of the bottle. Black chili in the mid, black pepper, clove, nutmeg, sage, and geranium. Then as a base of roasted almonds, tonka bean absolute, and woody notes. The new face of the advertising campaign is young singer-songwriter Jacob Whitesides. And honestly, I didn't know who that was, and I looked him up before doing this video. Seems like one of those young singer-songwriters that the ladies really, really like. And interestingly enough, he's from Knoxville, Tennessee, which is like an hour away from me, or maybe an hour and a half. So Jacob, if you watch this, you wanna hang out sometime, just hit me up. So this one uh, is already getting rated on Fragrantica, don't pay attention to that at all. 99 times out of 100 on Fragrantica, when a new release is announced, you get people who have never smelt it, who have no clue what it smells like, who go onto Fragrantica and trash it or upvote it for whatever reason. I mean, both of those are kind of equally stupid. If you've never smelled it, why vote on it? They'll also vote on the notes, which could throw you off because they might say, you know, this fragrance has a really powerful black chili note, but they've never smelled it. They're just upvoting that to throw people off. Basically, just 
don't pay attention to Fragrantica, at least not for a while. With new releases, it always takes a number of months for the uh, the ratings on Fragrantica to actually balance out and get more in line with what the fragrance is. And it's possible that a couple of people in Europe that may have gotten their hands on this early could have voted on Fragrantica, sure, but the vast majority of people that vote on fragrances early have never smelled it. I know most of you out there are already aware, but if you're a newer guy, just know that. Personally, I'm gonna check this out for sure. Spice Palm is a good line, and Victor and Rolf has a really good track record with fragrance releases. All right, on to the next release. Scent Story 24 Elixir, Rise of the Superb. Now this comes after their Ambrosia, Azure, and Neroli releases, which really caught no hype at all. They're also in the 24 Elixir bottle, and those you can pick up at fragrancebuy.ca. That's gonna be your best bet for pretty much anything Scent Story, to be honest. They have the best prices consistently, and they usually have the entire lineup, so. Now, this is a note from the brand. It's a little bit long, so stick with me. I reached the golden lake at the magical hour, the special moment when the day is about to awake and everything feels possible. The air was warm and welcoming, carrying the sweet, resinous fragrances of the old forest. I sat on the edge, my feet in the water, allowing a delicious feeling of serenity to develop. That I knew would vanish with the first light. And there rose the sun, superb and spectacular, preceded by a halo of amber light setting fire to the lake in a dramatic movement of life. Temperatures dropped for a second, giving rise to a playful wind that blended the calming sense of orange trees, geraniums, and bergamot in my immediate surroundings. Raising my head to follow its path, I caught sight of your slender figure walking towards me. This new day was full of promises, as sweet and fragrant as a sunrise on a golden lake. Tried to get into that for you, really capture the feeling. So that's a note from the brand about how this one is supposed to smell. The composition of 24 Elixir Rise of the Superb opens with a blend of bergamot, orange, and artemisia, followed by geranium and orange blossoms, and spiced by chili peppers. The base is powerful and strong, composed of a woody blend of patchouli and vetiver, warmed with golden amber heat. Now this is technically available now, uh, January 2019, though it's a little bit difficult to find. And the jury is out as to whether this one will catch hype or not. Since Story 24 Gold is probably the fragrance that they're most well known for, that one did get really favorable reviews in the community. Uh, people were really into that one for quite a while. But more power to them. Hopefully this one is a great fragrance. On to the next one. Two new Hugo Boss fragrances in the Boss Bottled Oud line. Two new flankers, I should say. Hugo Boss has launched Boss Bottled Oud Saffron and Boss Bottled Oud Aromatic. These are limited edition flankers to Boss Bottled Oud, which came out in 2015, which is a fragrance that I think is actually really, really nice. One of my favorite designer Oud fragrances. First off, Boss Bottled Oud Saffron. Boss Bottled Oud Saffron is a spicy take on the classic bottled Oud. Elegant and sophisticated notes of saffron and rose are wrapped into comforting labdanum resin. The base notes of precious oud woods give the fragrance its pure magnetism for a sumptuous and sensual scent. Uh, so my really quick take opinion on this, this adds your basic supporting oud notes to the fragrance, is what it sounds like. Saffron and rose are mixed with oud constantly. That's one of the most common combos in perfumery. I would still be interested to check it out because again, Boss Bottle Dude is very nice. It's legitimately like taking the Boss Bottle DNA with the apple and cinnamon and everything and adding in a really nice oud note. It's a very nice fragrance, Boss Bottle Dude, and I would be intrigued to see how that saffron and rose plays along with the now established Boss Bottled Oud DNA. Now, Boss Bottled Oud Aromatic is a luscious take on the classic bottled oud. So one is a spicy take, the saffron. This one, aromatic, a luscious take. It has an orange flower note on top and seductive myrrh at its heart. It is both seductive and comforting. So with this one, it's just saying orange flower on the top, myrrh at the heart. Assuming those are the only changes, maybe it would have a little more warmth in it. Uh, than the original bottled oud. Either way, I would actually buy both of these <laughs> just based off of how much I like bottled oud and the fact that these are both limited editions. That kind of gets thrown around a lot in fragrances and perfumery, limited edition. Sometimes when a fragrance company says limited edition, they actually mean it. 
and there will come a point where it's cut off and it's really, 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 really hard to find. And then you kick yourself for not buying it. Other times they say limited edition and you can still pick it up 10 years later, easily. So we'll see how these limited editions fall in the future, I guess. As of right now, these are available at John Lewis in the UK, 100 milliliter eau de parfum, size and concentration. Hopefully these are released in the US as well. Next up, a release from Trisardi, which most of you probably don't care about Trisardi, but maybe a couple of you do. They have a new fragrance coming out in March called Trisardi Rifleiso Blue Vibe. Apologies if my pronunciation was incorrect. This has top notes of rum, Davana, and yuzu, a mid of geranium, hazelnut, and artemisia, and a base of Italian leather, ambery woods, and tobacco absolute. Now, just looking at that no breakdown, it actually looks good. Rum, yuzu, Italian leather, ambery woods, tobacco absolute, hazelnut, artemisia, sounds good. Though that is a house that gets talked about basically none as far as YouTube goes. If I can find this fragrance at a decent price, I will pick it up. This one is supposed to come out in March. Next fragrance is from the house of Zoologist. It is the fragrance Dodo. And this one kind of goes hand in hand with Chameleon, which is a fragrance I talked about just a couple of weeks ago. These two releases are basically being presented together. Now I have for you a note from Zoologist about Dodo. Let's get into this. The sun sparkled across rippling waves, its morning dance upon the Indian Ocean rousing the dodos from their carefree slumber. Stumbling drunkenly from their nests, the birds waddled through the sea of luscious ferns that carpeted the forest floor to feast on fat, ripe berries. For generations, the island paradise of Maratius nurtured the dodos, its predator-free and bountiful shores lulling them into a state of such complacency that even their wings grew idle and flight was lost, even to memory. Ultimately, their evolution would betray them cruelly, but while it lasted, the dodos enjoyed an existence marked by ease and comfort. Note from Zoologist. This one has a top of fern, lychee, lime, and raspberry, mid of ambergris, balsam fir, geranium, and rose, and a base of amber, feathery musk, oak moss, patchouli, and sandalwood. Now I gotta come clean with you guys. I don't actually own a zoologist fragrance. It's bad on me, I know. I have sampled multiple zoologist fragrances from indiesense.com. I've wanted numerous zoologist fragrances over the years, and for whatever reason, I just haven't pulled the trigger. So maybe it's time for me to do that. Because I straight up love the presentation, I love the theme, I love the stories, I dig all of that. All right, last up, two fragrances for the ladies. That was cringy. First up, Mugler Angel Eau Quassier. If I pronounce that incorrectly, I'm sorry. It means cruise in English. For the 2019 season, Mugler Fragrances have prepared a new summer edition of the iconic gourmand fragrance, Angel. The new limited edition is inspired by the leisure atmosphere of summer cruises and flavors of fruity cocktails, which honestly sounds like something my wife would love. This one has two facets, okay? It has an energetic cocktail facet, which has mango, grapefruit, and blackcurrant sorbet, and then it has a voluptuous facet with patchouli and pralines. This fragrance is a 2019 summer release, so it's going to be limited edition, and it comes in a 50 milliliter size. And I may actually pick this one up for my wife, to be honest. And last up, Jean-Paul Gaultier Classique Cabaret. Jean-Paul Gaultier has launched Classique Cabaret, a new fragrance for women. Classique Cabaret is a variation on 93's Classique. A glittery red dress, a shower of stars and feathers, dive into the world of Classique Cabaret. This spectacular new eau de parfum by Jean-Paul Gaultier is an explosion of glamour, sensuality, and softness. Notes for this fragrance include orange blossom, ginger, amber, and vanilla. This is another fragrance that's a limited edition. So if any of these limited edition fragrances that we've talked about on This Week in Fragrance interest you, I would probably pick them up just as soon as you can. Like I said earlier, you never know with these. Codes, not too many, like usual. Kind of a dead zone here the last couple months or so for really good codes. Fragrance net, 37% off, you know the drill. Same as it's ever been. There will come a time that these change and go away. When that happens, I'll give you the new ones. And right now, Twisted Lily is doing another 
gift card giveaway versus how much you spend. Uh, they've been doing this a lot lately. So if you use code BMINE2519, uh, you will get a $25 gift card if you spend $125 or more on Twisted Lily. If you use the code BMINE5519, you will get a $55 gift card if you spend $250 or more on Twisted Lily. They do these fairly often, but if you're looking for a fragrance, especially a niche fragrance, that you can't find discounted, this is a good way to get at least a little bit of something back. Twisted Lily is one of the better niche retailers out there. I look like uh, like one of the dwarves from Snow White and Seven Dwarves. All right guys, that's gonna do us for another week in fragrance. Hopefully I'll see you guys again next week where we'll have maybe some more new releases to talk about. This week was a good one though. There are some pretty solid releases that have been announced and will be coming out shortly, so I'm psyched for that. Let me know in the comments which of these you're most excited for. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for supporting me. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.